Hello, it's Anne. Thanks for stopping by. I really do appreciate it. We are going to work a little bit on a process uh, today uh, that I think is going to help you use um, something that I bet you uh, you bet you throw away. Or if you're like me, maybe you don't throw them away, but you don't exactly know what to do with them. And that's these margins. We know that when we're going to use a piece of book page very often we just get our tear ruler out and pull those margins off and the margins served us very well oh I got a little bit of text there well we'll keep that that'll be fine um, the margins serve us uh, well in reading our books because they concentrate the text all in one place and, uh, but it's generally the text that we need when we're collaging. We're not going to use this part today, so we'll use you later, sir or madam. And we're going to use these little margins. I don't believe in saving all margins because you could drive yourself nuts and, and how much room would you have to save every margin that you pull off. But if you save a handful of them, I think you might find that they can be very useful for decorating the edge of a journal page if it's a little bit of a longer one, the top of a pocket, the middle of a tag. We're going to take a look at a few ways that we can use those, um, uh, that we can use those edges. And we're going to do it using a brush. This is a water brush uh, and watercolors. Now, sometimes I use uh, uh, the kids' watercolors. Are actually, I actually go into my, my grandson's uh, 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 craft stash and borrow his watercolors, and those are perfectly okay to use for these. Maybe you have artists' watercolors, which are gorgeous. I don't have anything like that. I have borrowed my grandson's from time to time, but what I'm going to use today is just my regular colored ink stamps. I, I, I'm also a card maker, so I have a lot of stamps from, or uh, uh, colored um, inks. Uh, f these are from Stampin' Up. I have a few other, um, a few other brands as well, but I really like the colors on Stampin' Up. I'm not a demonstrator. I'm just an enthusiast. Um, but I want to show you if this is the kind of, uh, of ink that you do have, you can get by using these and a brush. This is a brush that has water in the barrel, but you can use it just a regular watercolor brush as well. And you can have some really, really nice decorations for the edges of your journal elements. And you don't have to be an artist in any way. That's not happening around here. No artistry going on here, I'll tell you. Um, but you just don't need it for something like that. So all I'm going to do is to take a little margin, and this one has some page numbers on it. I think those are charming. I'm just going to leave those in there. And I've chosen these three colors to go together. And I'm just going to make... Move them down here a little bit easier for me to see, and they'll still be in frame for you. I'm just going to draw little squares, and later I'm going to stamp in them, although you don't have to. They end up looking kind of like paint samples. A nice a reason that I'm putting these on my uh, my grid um, desk mat is that I can kind of see how much space I'm going to take up with which uh, with each color. I want to put three colors on, and when I was first practicing, I was drawing one color and then I was cleaning my brush off and then drawing another color. It's a lot more efficient if I just clean my brush once. And all you do, you're not drawing, you're not painting, you're not exercising any artistic ability at all. You're moving your fingers back and forth. If you can craft, you can do this. Keep my little piece of t-shirt here handy and I just squeeze. If you can see the, the water that comes out of there, I just go back and forth. until the water runs clear. And this is gonna have a little bit of a nice fall theme. This is so simple, it's almost, almost embarrassing to show you, but we like simple, don't we? And just this little narrow strip of margin paper is just perfect for us to use for this purpose. Now I'm not gonna be able to stamp on these right away because with watercolor, you do really need to let it dry. Um, 
I've thought sometimes about putting um, uh, rubbing alcohol in the barrel of my um, uh, of my water pen because um, there are those who say that uh, that dries more quickly. I think I have rubbing alcohol somewhere in the house. Remember at the beginning of the pandemic when it was so hard to find? I mean, stores were out of it. So I kind of held on to the bottle that I did have in the house and uh, maybe it's in an undisclosed location. I don't know. I'll make certain, yeah, this is a gold. Anyway, I'm not gonna bother using the um, using the rubbing alcohol, but feel free to do that if you want. And the reason I want to really let this dry before um, I use it again is that if I stamp on top of these little squares and there's a little bit of moisture in there still, it, um, that moisture will um, kind of distort the um, uh, the ink on the stamp that I use, and you know that kind of ruins the ruins the whole effect. So here. is a little thing that kind of looks like a paint sample, but it's just a margin. And once it's done and has little um, uh, little stamps put on top of it, it just looks really, really cute. I'm gonna set that aside and let's look at a slightly different way that you can, that you can do the same thing. Maybe I'll use a different, different color combination. Heaven knows I have enough ink colors to choose from. And I do like my inks. I don't make as many cards as I used to. I need to get back into doing that for Christmas, but I've been having so much fun making junk journal elements and making YouTube videos, frankly, which truthfully I really never thought I'd be doing because I didn't think I had that many new ideas. And the more I do these, the more I realize maybe I do have some kind of new ideas or at least ideas that are new to me. So what I'm doing with this little swish is I'm not doing the full square. I'm making kind of a donut, leaving a little bit of light in there. And that way when I stamp on top of it later, it's gonna be, um, I'm just gonna add a little bit of a different dimension to the final image that we come up with. Again, precision is not required here. In fact, I think precision should be discouraged because that's not what we're going for. See the only, just moving my fingers back and forth. No talent required, friends. Absolutely none. There's my green one. Clean off my brush. Put my green away. And you can see I'm just touching the side of my, um, of my ink pad. You know, it's 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 as though this were a, a a set of watercolor palettes here, where you just put your wet brush into it. I'm just picking up ink that's already on my ink pad, and it's just and and you're not going to contaminate your ink pad at all using this method. It's it's a water based ink. There's already a lot of water in there. No harm will. Your ink pad will come to absolutely no harm with you introducing just that tiny bit of water in the side. In fact, probably during the time you're using it, that same amount of water that you introduce is evaporating out. I don't, I don't know. I haven't done run any scientific uh, tests on that, nor do I plan to, but I just have confidence that there is no problem with using this water pen and just touching the side of an ink pad. Our purple one away. Oh, my hands are, I've been doing lots of watercolor today and I've been doing coffee staining of paper outside. So um, I'm a bit of a mess. Oh, I'm liking these three colors together. So you can see I'm kind of keeping, I'm not measuring precisely by any means, but I'm just kind of keeping the scale and the spacing of my little yellow splotches or my little inked splotches kind of uniform here on my piece of margin paper. It's 
snappity snap. I like that one. Those are nice colors. Isn't that going to be handy? And I have to set these aside. They are dry to the touch now, but again, I have I have learned from bitter experience that if I stamp on top of them, I will uh, uh, have some distortion there. So let's look at a couple that I did. I guess I did this one yesterday. This is on a very old piece of, uh, of book page. And I just kind of want to see what some stamping will look like on this one. And I'm going to go with my brown. I don't use Distress Ink for stamping because I don't, I don't think you get very nice clear images that way. Um, the <laughs> This is one of those weird four-in-one rubber stamps, and I got this at a rummage sale just today. My daughter and her um, neighbors were having a, a rummage sale in their community, and we stopped by after breakfast, and I thought, oh, a nice little stamp. Yes, I will pick that up for 50 cents or whatever it was. Oh, that looks cute. Let's try the next one. I'm going to go every other square here. And how efficient is this four-in-one stamp? I don't even have to put things down. I do have to look carefully to see where I've been. That fourth one is really small, so I guess I'm gonna go back up to, to that one. Oh, I love this. Isn't that gonna look nice? Let me show you a way that we could use that. It would be great just on the edge of a journal page. Wouldn't that be cute? You have your writing space. Let's ink up the, the sides, just kind of help it help it express its true junk journal character. This paper is old and fragile. It tore a little bit there. And guess what? For a junk journal, that is okay. Doesn't that look nice? It really does. Maybe I'd put it on a, a browner page or one that had a little bit of stitching or something on it too. Yes, I'm liking that. So an edge of a journal page is one thing that could work really nicely. What about if we made a tag as well? I have a piece of, of book page here that has so many layers of mixed media stuff on it. I think I put gesso and then I think I brayered on a little bit of brown acrylic ink and then I dribbled a few distress, uh, uh, dis diluted distress inks on it and then I spattered some white paint on it. I, I guess I kind of went nuts that day. But I you can still see a little bit the text behind here and this is from an index page um, of an old uh, agricultural textbook um, and uh, how I have that, I don't really, or why I have that, I don't really know. Um, but that text, that, that index page with that really small uh, uh, text just makes a really nice tag. Anyway, let's make this into a tag, and won't this be nice for a fall journal? Do I want to bring this all the way down here? Or do I want to push that up? Yep, I think I'm just going to put it as it lays. And this is all this tag is going to need. Oh, don't those blend together so nicely. Tag base is already backed. I keep a little basket of them always here at my craft desk. Do you know what? I could use that to decorate the back of the tag, but I'm going to wait until I'm done. So we'll hang on to that guy. Let's make a tag out of this fella. 
I don't know why I'm assigning gender to it. That's probably not right. Let's make a tag out of this piece of paper. It's just a little loyalty card with corners cut off in um, three different angles and I just use that um, as a template. There are specialty chompers that you can get to cut tag corners, but I have so many other specialty specialty punches. I just, uh, I don't really need one for the, for the tag corners. I do like my corner rounder for the bottom. And besides just visually it being nice, this makes it easier for tags to slide in uh, to the pockets where they will reside. And let's kind of figure out the middle here. And here's my hole punch. A lot of times I'll put eyelets around the the top of a tag, but lately I've just sort of, I've just been using hole um, paper hole reinforcers, and then I paint or ink something uh, on them so they have have a little more pizzazz. There is adhesive on here, but a little bit of ink is going to ensure that's going to stay in place. And I like to have a match front and back. And they have the function of actually reinforcing the hole as well. Now, as for the back, I use this little, little bit of leftover something, and we'll just kind of decorate the back. It's gonna echo its decorative friends on the front. I'm just going to paste that right down there. Paste, I mean glue, you know what I mean. And when we're writing on the back, that'll just give a little bit of extra visual interest there. I do like decorating the backs of tags, sort of like when I make cards, I always put some sort of stamp on the on the envelope as well. Should we see if we have any twine or anything going in the top? I bet I have some, I bet I do. This is a little thick, but oh, it's green. Nope, I think I'm gonna go just with this basic twine. It's always nice to work with what you have within arm's reach. And there's our tag with our little book margin and a little bit of, of, of watercolor from our colored ink pads. Did not need anything special at all. Or certainly you could use your kids' um, um, watercolors as well. Just those little squares. They took absolutely no artistic talent whatsoever. I love it. I love it. This is going to be nice in a fall journal. Um, let's look at a couple of other things that I've made using this technique. And, um, and then I'm going to show you one more technique too. So here I put these together. Here is one uh, that I made out of a very light uh, book margin and I, I love it. I love just love leaving the, leaving the page numbers in there. Sometimes they end up in there and sometimes they don't and if they, if they do stay in there that's just sort of an added bonus. 
I wanted some kind of bright summery colors, but these came out a little, a little bit bright, a little bit brighter um, uh, than I was planning on. And I looked at this and I thought, this looks really nautical. Um, I'm not a sailor, but I do love the beach. And I looked at this and I thought, I think I have a sailboat fussy cut in kind of those colors. And I rummaged around and yes, I found a little sailboat. I had cut this out of a uh, off the cover of a greeting card or something, something that came in the mail that, you know, again, this this isn't my usual motif, but it just looks so cheerful and summery. Uh, when I was fussy cutting a couple of weeks ago, I just found it. And indeed, uh, without planning it at all, those colors match really, really nicely. So I thought, why don't we make a little tag this is part of the envelope that went with the same card set, and I had saved that and pasted it on front on, on the top of an old postcard. The 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 picture um, of the postcard was very unremarkable, and so I'm I'm saving this for journaling space and uh, put part of the envelope here, and I just happened to have those together. So I thought, what if this? You now this is just printed on here, this little you know dark blue and this juxtaposition, but if I put my sailboat there it kind of looks like the sailboat is bobbing up and down on the wave so i kind of like that positioned down there but look how nice this would look here now do i need any stamping on it i'm gonna say yes because at today's yard sale i found a little clam isn't that cute it's a little clam and I thought, well, if we're just kind of thinking of a beachy day, maybe I can journal about a little little something like that. So this won't be too exciting, but just to show you what I what I want to do. This clam is probably a little bit big for these little splotches. I certainly could do every one if I wanted, but every other one seems appropriate. It can fall over the edges, that's okay. And I did use VersaFine ink here because that really does, when, when you have any kind of detail on a stamp that you really want to show up, VersaFine is just really nice for it. But it is a pigment ink, so it takes a while to dry. So I want to be careful and give that a couple of minutes to dry. I think that's going to be cute. But guess what? It needs something up here. So in my thinking about this, I went into uh, a... Um, a visitor's guide that I had saved from our summer, summer's travels. And I thought, why don't I put something kind of ocean-y or something here? And um, maybe I'll go all the way over here and just tear this little map. And we'll cover up most of it. But that is really okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Um, I suppose I should ink the edge because, heaven forbid, I give let any edge go uninked in a journal card like this. And this is going to be a card and not a tag because I want to keep the full integrity of the postcard on the back. Yeah, I think that's going to be fine. Where's my glue stick? Use that little piece of text we cut out earlier for, for this little piece. having an old hotel key or a loyalty card to spread out glue after you've glue sticked something is always time well spent. Let's see, I don't think I've inked, have I inked this guy yet? I might have inked him a little bit. Let's give him another little, another little shot. Yeah, he's going to be nice there, but I'm going to put my watercolor strip down first and yeah I think I want to position it from the top 
It looks like that blue one. Oh no, I kind of want that page number showing. So let's go all the way from the top. Ooh, and I like 76 there too, because this looks kind of patriotic. So it kind of makes me think of 1776. I might be better served doing this afterwards, but as long as I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and tear this off. Obviously I can use that for something else. What a fun way to use up book margins. And so easy, right? Oh, how very clever you will be in doing your junk journals if you use this method. that ink out of there and let's get our little our little sailboat here is he better no I'm gonna I think I don't want him covering up that clamshell so I think I'm just gonna end his little Eh, I should have had it go right up there. Shall I piece it together? You know what I can do? I can just tear this off. There are always workarounds. Oh, that's going to be practically invisible. There we go. And what a cute little journal card. I could even send it as a postcard if I wanted to, I guess. It certainly is sturdy enough it could go through the mail. Yeah, that's cute. I like that. And I really like this use of, um, uh, of the margin strip. So there is that. Um, there's one other thing I wanted to show you. Um, what if we didn't want to just do those squares to use our margin strips. So what if we wanted to use circles? Well, I was experimenting, which is one reason that my hands are so grubby. And I thought these circles were kind of cute. I thought something like this might be, um, might be kind of fun too, maybe on a small journal. What about, let's see if something like this would work on a, on a small journal page. Something like that would be kind of Kind of cute to define that a um, that edge, or to put on a belly band, to put in the middle of a tag, you know, for any number of of um, uh, of purposes. But um, it is kind of fun to have shapes to use that are super easy, that aren't just the uh, the squares that we squiggle. So, can you guess what I used <laughs> to stamp these? I used a thimble. Isn't that handy? You can use any like like a little top of a you know of a of a little you know spice bottle or a you know you could probably find something in your kitchen that's about that size or any size that you want. But I'm going to show you how easy it is to um, to use these, particularly for our narrow margin pieces. So here's oh. I was practicing earlier, maybe using a dolphin uh, on that sailboat thing, but the dolphin looked. A little creepy so I decided to turn this margin over and use it for something else. Here is my thimble. I'm going to put my glue back or else that's going to dry up. And I'd like to use a couple of different colors. 
I think I might want to use the, maybe the red and the gold. How about that? And not the purple this time. I'm going to pull out a, um, an acrylic block and you will soon see why because I do want to be careful about not contamin uh, contaminating or cross-pollinating any of my inks uh, on, my, um, on my nice um, ink pads. And so I'm going to pick up some ink on an acrylic block on this lighter one. And that's just going to serve as our ink source for the yellow. And then I'm going to just open this up. Uh, What's this called? Mary Merlot. Uh, it's a dark red one, and this will be a source. We'll just go directly to that. But the first thing I'm going to do is, um, and I'm just going to do a few of these because you'll you'll get the idea very very shortly. Um, but I'm gonna because I want to have two colors on the imprint um, here. I'm going to go most of the way. Maybe I'll pull you in here. I'm going to go most of the way in. You can see that there's there's ink on the edge of that. And then I'm going to do the rest. I'm just going to kind of go on here, and that'll be a source. And just use that like a stamp. Now it always comes out a little bit different, so you never quite know. Okay, this one wasn't really, really heavy on the red. But what I'm going to do is use my water pen... And I'm just going to pick up some of the ink that's pooled there where that edge of the thimble has, has come in. And that water's going to activate those edges where the ink has pooled a little bit. And you just kind of pull that in and you end up with kind of a pastel piece. If you want more, you just go back to your source and put a little bit more in that circle. And it's not, it's not precise at all. It's not supposed to be, but you can just dilute, dilute the ink with as much water as you want. And you have this kind of intriguing little thing and every single one is different. Let's try it again, but I do like to clean the thimble in between because there's I've picked up some of the yellow on um, on here and I don't want to introduce that back into the into the red I'll try to get a little more juiciness here yeah it looks like that has a little bit more I'm not going to do too many of these but I just I think you'll eh, it didn't get very much more on there it did sometimes it really kind of pulls up but let's and try to show you how that can work. It's very faint. Maybe if I use something that had a little bit of a thicker rim, I could get more, um, I could get introduce more color. But for right now, I really kind of like the, the idea of, of, of something kind of thin. And it's just really easy with this fine tip water pen or water brush to go in and pick this up. So I'm not going to do a whole lot of um, of those, but uh, but you you get the idea. Now, what do I do with this ink that's on there? Well, you know me. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna waste it. Uh, where is a plain sheet of something? about if I stain this and then I can use it for something else. There we go. I'll go back and splatter something else on that and use that for a tag. Not the prettiest, but it, uh, it keeps me from wasting that, uh, uh, the rest of that ink. So that's it for watercoloring uh, today, guys. Again, just get yourself some kind of a, a, a brush. 
the cheap kind of brush that comes with your kids' watercolors, that will do really, really nicely as well. Here's the two that we did, and let me show you a couple of others. This one I did do um, using my grandson's <laughs> watercolors and um, different kinds of uh, a different kind of color palette, but one that went really nice with this springtime motif. Here's a little a little strip with some keys stamped on it. Here's another, another one of these agriculture index pages with a few fall leaves on it. And um, oh, here's one that I did slightly different pattern, but just kind of a frilly flower on each one. So these could go on a belly band, they could be on the edge of a pocket, they can be on the edge of a page. You can use them almost anywhere. And the important thing is you're using up margins and you're pressing yourself to find a way to create using that really small, um, uh, that's a little, very small piece of paper real estate and you're making something beautiful. So that's it for today. Thanks guys. See you soon.